one versus two bedroom condos in Toronto. Which is the better investment? Should you invest in one bedroom condo or two bedroom condo? Should you invest in a bachelor or the penthouse? This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor and Mortgage Broker, and today I'm going to talk to you about what is the best investment. A small condo, a medium-sized condo, a large condo, and so on and so forth. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent and Mortgage Broker, uh, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, where you find all my updates. Here you will find um, everything that I do uh, comes in here, the latest videos, listings, assignments, uh, pre-VIP, everything that I do uh, funnels here, lots of assignments, lots of great deals shown on Twitter, you know, you, you can't post it on MLS, you can't post it anywhere else, so if you're looking for assignments, for cash flow properties like this one, 469, that we believe will make a cash flow of 26,400 a year, that this is real, my friends, this is on MLS right now, uh, this exists, okay? Uh, 699, uh, beautiful one bed, one bath, Kingly, just above the Shopify building. Galleria condos, we talked about it all week. The sale is still going on. If you're looking to invest, this is one of the best projects in Toronto right now. I really love it. There's so many good things about it. Okay, so this is Yossi Kaplan. Um, the penthouse, so <laughs> I'll start from the top. Uh, King Toronto, uh, just a couple of days ago, launched their penthouses. Those penthouses come in at $2,000 a foot, my friends. $2,000 a foot to live at a penthouse at King West, okay? Now, the other units are not that cheap either. They're 1600 a foot, 1700 a foot. So, you know, <laughs> really, it's not that much of a, of a jump. Uh, but nonetheless, the price per dollar per foot is really, really high. So, you know, for many years, a lot of investors were investing in the smallest units they could find, the smallest, tiniest units they could find. Uh, this, by the way, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kappa. And here you'll find all my recent videos. Hit that like button give me some good comments smash that bell there you go all right um so for, for the longest time you know the market's been going through um sh just by the cheapest cheapest unit we can find it's the cheapest investment it's the lowest uh dollar per foot uh because it's you know like that, that that's maybe not the lowest dollar per foot, one of the lowest dollars per foot in the building usually we'll buy you know the second floor overlooking the garbage the second floor overlooking um the alleyway this is absolutely no view so a lot of people would go and buy these and i used to do that too uh because it first of all i couldn't afford anything else you know i couldn't afford any floor above that was like that when i was getting into the the game i was just buying the smallest units i could find because that's all i could do um but you know um what if you didn't buy the smallest unit you find what if you bought a, a bit of a nicer unit what if you bought a bit of a larger unit how would that work okay so let's look at a few of the of the parameters of what really makes a unit a good investment and then let's look at should you buy like here it's kind of a one bedroom studio or should you buy um, the penthouse or a two bedroom okay so it goes like this when you buy and i'm going to use this uh there's some nice pictures here of this uh one bedroom condo unit i've, I've been in this unit it's really nice um and he sold you know the first one here sold for about uh five five and change and then the next one sold in the same in the same building like the week later, and he sold for about twenty or thirty thousand more. And the third one sold in the same week or the week after for another twenty thousand more. So there was over fifty thousand dollars difference in in the price of these units. Okay, so who who did the best? Of course, the person who paid the least and got the most did the best. Now, assuming they're all uh, in this case because it's a new building and these were. Um, just after closing, they were not assignments, it's just after closing, but assuming that the person actually got these units here, uh, in this case, the bedroom is behind the kitchen here, but some of these units, the bedroom is the front, but they're more or less the same size, 500 and change square foot, you know, 550, whatever it is. Uh, here's a little bedroom, that's a stage unit, so it gives you an idea of what it looks like, okay? So, um, if these units sold originally, say, for $600 a foot, and, uh, and then you flip them for $700 a foot, and your gross margin was $100 a foot. So $100 a foot over 500 uh, square feet, $50,000. If you made $150,000 foot margin, then you made $75,000. You made 200, you made 100,000. Okay, and you can see the quality here is really nice. This is a lovely building. It's really good. This is some of the amenities, the Harlow. Um, so if they all bought at the same time, obviously the person who bought the, the uh, they paid the least and so for the most won, which is great. Here's, uh, by the way, this is, this is um, some of these bedrooms you're looking at here. Yeah, you can see it. So it looks somewhere like this. You know, there's variations, but that's what they look like here. 
And that's all on yossikaplan.com. You can see all this information. You don't need a password or anything. Um, now, uh, for example, this unit here, let's say they paid uh, originally, just for the sake of argument, 400000 and sold it for five hundred. For 400000 they had the 20%, which is uh, 80000 I'm going to ignore the closing costs, but they're always in there. Uh, but just for the sake of argument, uh, they paid 400 for the unit, 20% down, that's 80000 Okay, let's say they sold it for 100 more, 500 So they made, they more than doubled, gross speaking, of course, they more than doubled their investment, which is amazing. Now let's look at another unit, and let's pick uh, a unit which is, and this is kind of a, you know, barely a one-bedroom. It's kind of a cove. Um, but let's look at something like, uh, okay, that's really large. I'll find something in between. Okay, and everything I show you here is live, by the way, my friends. There's, there's no scripting. This is, this is me talking to you. Uh, you can see we're going to redo the internet access here. Thank you very much. There we go. Okay, so here's a two-bedroom, 80 square feet. So, you know, dollar per foot, they would have paid less for the other unit because the larger the unit, the less you pay for the unit. So if they paid 400000 for the 500 square feet, they're not going to pay... Uh, if this is a thousand square feet, they're not going to pay eight hundred thousand. They're going to pay a little less usually. Okay, so this eight eighty square feet. I'm going to bring my calculator up. I don't know if you can see it. You can, but just just bear with me. And uh, if they paid um, four hundred uh, for five hundred square feet, they paid eight hundred foot. Okay, in our example. But let's say this unit here, they pay seven hundred foot times eight eighty. So they pay six sixteen for the unit. Okay, now this unit these days uh, will probably sell for. Eight hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars. So we have a margin here of uh, of even only at eight hundred thousand of almost two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and the twenty percent of the six sixteen is one twenty. So actually, in this case, investment wise, <laughs> this unit did a lot better, a lot better than the small unit. Okay, so why people? Uh, and let me go back to my screen here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, this unit here did a lot better because it made more money and percentage wise. It had a bigger bounce. Nonetheless, most most investors still buy small units. Okay, so mathematically, the two bedroom um, could beat the one bedroom. Okay, um, when it comes to selling, however, this one bedroom, like 538 square feet, and here I don't like the kitchen on the side, by the way, which should always be on the back wall or an L shape, especially in this because the, the the living room is too small. That's that's a common error that architects do. You know, and I'm telling you, that's a common error. Put the architect to live in this unit and see how they feel after a year, okay? But generally speaking, I divert all the time, but generally speaking, uh, the small units, the reason they're so attractive is because they need very little deposit, and, and you, can, you can assume the mortgage is the, it's the, it's the lowest level entry, and you can sell it to someone else quickly. So your, your profit dollar-wise may not be the biggest, but it's more of an assurance. It's more of a risk-free. You go, you know, there's a lot of people looking for the bottom end unit. There's obviously the pyramid is very thin at the top. So the larger the unit that you're looking at, um, uh, the harder it is theoretically to sell it because there's less people looking at these units. Now, it's not necessarily 100% correct, although generally speaking, it does make a lot of sense because the market always expands. Because the economy always expands. There's always more and more money coming into the system. So that's why I'm saying that although the one bedroom is, is a really good entry point, sometimes the larger units, okay, here's a giant unit, 1,535 square feet, which is perfect design. Two bedrooms on the side, two en suites, and a large living room in the center with a large, you know, that's a penthouse unit with a large uh, exterior. So these units, you know, the larger units usually will tend to make a lot more money dollar per dollar than the smaller units. However, if you were to rent these units out, uh, the small units usually are easier to break even, you know, because the price I paid for them is really low. So this unit, because I only paid for it 400000 and maybe I bought a resale for 500 it's still going to make more sense ROI-wise uh, than uh, a larger unit where my mortgage payments could be really, really high. And although the rent's really high, I showed you, uh, I showed you the rentals for $10,000 a month, and uh, 9500 a month right here in King West, and 7500 a month, you know. Even though, if you're looking at a condo is worth a million dollars or $2 million, you get or $3 million, uh, like we looked at uh, last week, you may need like crazy, crazy rents to 
to satisfy um, the mortgage. And that may not be available if the price is too high, the mortgage is too high. So the other thing you can do, of course, as investors is to start moving the mortgage amount. So put more money down or increase your mortgage payments to kind of make the equilibrium that you need to find that equilibrium between the money you're putting into the investment and the money you're taking out as profit. Okay, see what I'm saying? The nice thing about condos and the mortgages of today is you can vary the amount of mortgage you pay. Uh, the fixed cost, the condo fees and the taxes, you cannot change. They're fixed. They're about a dollar or a dollar ten per foot for these condos these days, uh, but some less. You know, your typical 400 square foot condo these days, the, the condo fees are about 400 bucks a foot. That makes it about 80 cents a foot on average. Okay, that's reasonable. And the taxes will be, say, about 150 to 200. So it's about a dollar a foot you're paying in condo fees and taxes, give and take, on these units. So if you look at your, uh, you know, 492 square feet, you can, you can safely assume, give or take, 5, 10% that you pay about 500 bucks a month fixed cost for this unit. Now, if you pay for the units for cash, Okay, and let's say you, you let's let's say this unit costs you 500 bucks a month in fixed cost tax condo fees, and you pay for cash two thousand uh, dollars, you still got fifteen hundred left. You still have fifteen hundred left, and that fifteen hundred, uh, it's yours in the pocket, um, or you can put it back towards the mortgage. Okay, that's that's the idea. Um, if you have a unit like this one, which is a large unit, two bedroom, um, you got to look at a rent of about four or five thousand dollars a month here. Uh, but the question is, and of course say about 1200 1300 a month so that leaves you with 20 2700 to 3700 dollars a month uh in rents which you can take as profit that you didn't pay for or you can use all of it or some of it towards your mortgage the actual roi calculations uh which are didn't make any sense for me what you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, gross rents what you get from the tenant uh remove your fixed costs which is your condos and taxes and that the amount you have left over, that's the gross uh, profit before mortgage, because I don't know if you have or not. Some of you buy, buy for cash, some of these, some of you don't. And then that divide by your deposit, which is the actual cash you put in. And that kind of gives you kind of rough cash on cash. Obviously, not bringing into consideration other little factors, but kind of trying to standardize, normalize all these calculations. But that's how we do it, okay? Um, so generally speaking, um, the one-bedroom condo in the short term will be easier to do, okay? And maybe even a bit more profitable in the short term, but in the long term, the two bedroom uh, will probably surpass, will probably surpass the one bedroom in terms of how much money the investors at the end will make. Uh, the investor will find a bit, maybe take a little longer, but not necessarily because a nice corner of sweet penthouse uh, will always find a buyer because there's so few of those. I, I was trying to get one for for a client, and we just you know we got bid out at the Thompson. A fashion house, we just put for all these panels. It's like, there's just like so many of them coming out. You know, every building just have two or three or four or five or six penthouses, but usually it's between two and four, right? Per floor, and that's the real panels. There's a sub penthouse, and we have terrace, but the real penthouse is just the penthouse. So, you know, a unit like this, you got like a nice three bedroom here, very good organized. You could probably get four or five thousand dollars a month. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, it may take a little longer, and the price you're paying could be relative dollar per foot higher, reduces a bit your ROI in the, in the short term, but the long term, this unit will probably do really, really well, okay? So that's, so if you're a short-term investor, probably go for the smaller units. Uh, if you're a long-term investor, you got a bit of cash, and you might make a lot of cash at the end, you probably want to invest your money in something that is larger, that enables you that, okay? And that's why, for example, if you look at uh, Galleria Mall, and I have some of the plans here to show you. Uh, in Galleria Mall, let's check in here, 14 minutes in. Okay, in Galleria Mall, what's happening is that everyone's wanting the, the little unit, but the two bedroom units actually quite priced quite low. You know, the average 965 a foot, so if the average 965 a foot, you could probably buy um, a unit here, double the size of what you buy at King West, so you get yourself a nice penthouse or what a regular unit will cost you King West. So you can buy a, two, a nice two bedroom or three bedroom penthouse here. You know, here are the three bedrooms. Um, sorry, these are the one bedrooms uh, and the three bedrooms are here. These are the three bedrooms here, three plus den. So, you know, you can pick a unit like this and this will run you less than a million dollars, uh, but you got a three bedroom unit and that's really, really good in my opinion because in the long term, that's a fantastic investment. Especially if you find yourself like a really nice corner unit, uh, good design, 
good uh, good uh, division of rooms. I mean, this is not bad here. This is uh, pretty tight. That's 1,015 square feet, which is, you know, considerable, but still, because you stick three bedrooms here, and a dining, and a kitchen, you know, it's, it's, it, it becomes uh, busy enough. But nonetheless, it's a really nice corner. So that's, you see what I'm saying here. Here's a two bedroom in 909. That's a very good design here, side by side. Uh, sorry, uh, one across on the other. Um, so that means you can, you can easily have a young family here, a couple of roommates, a professional with an office, uh, one person living here, the owner renting the other room, or two tenants, okay, two renters. Uh, same here. So you gotta look. You gotta look at these designs. That's a side by side right here, but it's still very good. Ample space, and it's all in 703 square feet. So this unit, in my opinion, could be a really good uh, um, candidate for investment because it's tight enough. Um, it's tight as a one bedroom, but it's got two small bedrooms in it, so it's a very good investment property, in my opinion. Very good rental. Okay, I want to have the most amount of rooms, good design, but a small space costs me less. This one also really nice. Okay, uh, this one here, you know, they're both facing the um, outside, so of course it comes. Um, you got to pay the price here in terms of of the common space. Okay, here you get maybe a bit more common space, but the one bedroom it's really like a den. It it just slides door. And anyone's cooking in the kitchen, this person here is exposed to it. Here, uh, maybe a little less, you know? So, but they're still they're very small. I mean, that's 660 square feet. That's, that's pretty tight. Uh, but that's very efficient in terms of a rental unit. So, if you look at these rental units, these two bedrooms, I think these make a lot of sense and they probably make high hour rise. 750 square feet, two full beds, two full baths. Uh, just enough space for the living dining and the large balcony. So those are good investment units, okay? Another one. Those are good rental units. You, you got to cram a lot. That's the thing. You got to cram a lot into this unit. You can see what they're doing here. That's actually quite nice. That's a really nice. So that's it. Should you buy a two or th uh, a one bedroom, a small one bedroom, or a, a two bedroom? It really depends. It depends, first of all, on your ability uh, to pay, I mean, I have no doubt that the Penas as a Queen West will do really, really well. A King West will do really, really well. Because there's nothing like it. And you know, you buy a penthouse here for $2 million or $3 million, I'm sure there'll be a buyer for it for a million more in a few years. Why not? So you can make a million dollars like boom. But if you can't and you need to get in, then you get yourself in at a, at a, to, into a smaller space. And at least you get, you know, like here. Okay, this one. So if you can pick this one up for five and change, that's really good because now you can start flipping it and you know take your 50,000 profit, take your 80,000 profit, take your 100,000 profit and flip it again and again and again until you can get to the penthouse. That's the idea. You will have a portfolio of properties, make your positive cash flow and then all you do is you manage these properties. That's how we do it. That's it.